Hi, this is Shreng Siddharth once again from Smartherd. Welcome to the next module of Java Fundamentals and Basics course. In this module, we will talk about what are methods in Java and what do we mean by the concept of method overloading in Java. So first of all, how does a method look like? That is, what is the basic structure of a method in Java? Now so far we have seen the public static void main method having the argument of string array. And inside this main method we use to write our code. Now whatever code that we write inside a method is actually known as the method body. So this is the basic structure of the method. Now what do we mean by the public static void and this main function? So this public static is actually known as the modifier in Java. Now this public static can be the private static or only private or the protected. And this static part, I will come to it in our upcoming modules. So as of now, please don't worry about what does this static stands for. So whatever we write just before the void or the return type, it is actually known as the modifier of the method. And now next comes the void. Now this void is actually the return type in Java. So this simply signifies that this main method does not return anything. Now the void actually means nothing. So this method does not return anything at the end of this method, right? And now this main is actually the user defined method. So we can say this main is actually the name of the method that we are dealing with. And this string array args is actually the formal parameters of this main method. So this is all about the structure of the methods in Java. Now from inside this main method, whatever code we write is actually known as the method body. So from inside this main method, we can also call a separate method or some other method such as let us call add method to add these two numbers 2 and 3. Now this method can be defined like this private static int add int a and int b. Now let us come to this private static part. It is again the modifier that we saw here public static. And now let us come to int part. Now here in case of main method we have void as the return type. But in case of add method we have the return type of int. Now I will come to it shortly. And here this add is actually user defined. And it is actually the method name. So this method name we have here as add. And as a parameters, that is the formal parameters, we have integer a and integer b. Now always make sure the signature of this method add should match with this signature of add. That is this 2 is actually the integer value and this 3 is actually the int value. So here it has to be a int a and int b. And here we cannot write string a and string b because we are actually passing the 2 and 3 as a parameter. So when this statement is executed, this 2 will appear in place of a and this 3 will appear in place of b. So inside this method, we got the value of int a as 2 and int b as 3. So now let us define int sum equal to a plus b and then return sum. So return is the keyword for this integer return type. So here return statement simply returns the integer sum value. So that is why in the return type we have int here. If we return the float value here then it will be float here. If we return the string value here then we have to define string here. As simple as that. So here this statement simply returns the sum of 2 and 3. And then inside the main function we can utilize this sum variable or the sum of these two number and print it out inside this main method only. And now you must be thinking why do we need this method? Why didn't we just add a and b right here inside the main method and print the value, right? Why do we need to have a specific add method and write all these code here? So here let us come to this slide. Why do we need methods in Java? So on the left hand side let us take an example sum 1 equal to 2 plus 3, sum 2 equal to 4 plus 9 and then print the value of sum 1 and print the value of sum 2. So here what we are doing is we are adding 2 and 3, 4 and 9 
and storing it in a separate variable of sum1 and sum2 and then print out the values. So in the output we get 5 and 13 as the output. Fine. So this is the normal way of coding in Java. We have a method main and inside this we just perform some operation. Right. And now let us come to this part. Right hand side. Public static void main method and here we have sum1 equal to add 2 and 3 sum2 equal to add 4 and 9. So here we are simply passing 2 and 3 as a parameter and 4 and 9 as a parameter and then simply printing the value of sum1 and sum2. Now this method add is actually present here. Private static int sum int a and int b return the sum of these two numbers that is a plus b. So in the output again we get the similar output 5 and 13. So comparing the left hand side with the right hand side we can notice here we are performing 2 plus 3 and 4 plus 9 manually but here we are just relying on the method of add method. So when this statement is executed this simply calls this add method here and by mistake I have written sum here. So let me change it. So now we have add method here fine. So when this statement is executed it simply calls this method. So this statement doesn't care what are the codes that we have written inside this add method fine. So it simply call this method and we get the result inside the sum1 variable and similar is the case of this sum2 variable. Simply call this method and get the result right. But here on the left hand side there is a chance of doing some mistake because we are actually repeating the code again and again. Here the codes are pretty simple 2 plus 3 but imagine a situation where you have a very complex method so the probability of doing the mistake by repeating the code again and again is very high. So that is why we use methods in Java. So let me make it more clear why do we need them in Java by taking few examples such as in the previous videos and modules we actually printed the value with the help of this method system.out.println and passed some value as a parameter. Now this println is actually the method. So we simply call this method and whatever we pass inside this method gets printed in the output console. So in short we don't care what are the codes that are present inside this method. We just call this method and we get as the output the printed value. Now let us take more example. In the previous module we checked out the strings in Java and we also explored the concat method, char at and length method. So we simply call the method and we get the output right. That is combine two strings get a specific character value and also get the length of the string. And similarly the string buffer methods string buffer dot append reverse and delete the string right. Now if you check out the documentation of this sb dot reverse method then you will find the whole bunch of code written. So whenever we call sb dot reverse then it simply calls this method present here. So now you can notice here inside the reverse method we have whole lot of code here. Which I guess you don't want to write it again and again just to reverse a particular string value. So we can call this reverse method whenever we want and in the output we will get the reverse string right. So this statement sb.reverse don't care what are the codes that are written inside this method. We just call this method and get back the desired result. Similar is the case of delete we just call the delete method and what's going on inside the delete method we don't care at all. So this is the major advantage and significance of using the methods in Java. So at the end I would like to define methods as the collection of statements or the codes that are grouped together to perform a specific operation. For example inside this reverse method these are the collection of codes and these collection of codes are grouped together to perform a specific operation such as reversing the string right. So let us conclude this video by this definition and in the next video I will show you how to use methods in Java in detail inside the IntelliJ IDE. So meanwhile if you like what you saw please subscribe to this channel and please do leave a comment below this video. 
This is Shrek from Smarthood signing off. Thank you and have a good day.